Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to learn how to make a very beautiful pair of shorts. Uh, right now it's paired with the Shelly Butterfly crochet top with sleeves. And if you would like to check out the tutorial, make sure you check it out immediately after this video so that you can have a matching set. So I have different approaches of how to work mesh pants, mesh shorts, and I'll be leaving some of the links to the different styles. Uh, if you would like to try them out, I have tutorials for about, let me say, three styles of how to make the mesh pants or shorts. And you should make sure you check them out so that you can get more knowledge about how to go about this approach. But for today, we are going to make a very simple pair of um, shorts, as you can see in the video. Um, if you would like the longer version with the other uh, bigger mesh type please uh, check the description box below i'll be leaving the video there the link to that video there uh, and uh, maybe it's something that you could try out after this these shirts already have a written pattern and you can check it out on my online shops i'll be leaving all the links in the description box below the materials that you'll need for this are a measuring tip a pair of scissors a darning needle and a crochet hook now the crochet hook that we are going to use is a 4 millimeter crochet hook and the yarn that we shall be using is milk cotton yarn so i'll be leaving all the details in the description box below so you're going to grab your yarn and your crochet hook and you're going to make a slip knot and we are going to make a chain that runs from the waistline from your waistline just measure until your butt uh just right below your butt or if you're making it for someone then you have to take that measurement from the waistline down to below your butt so i have made 51 chains you should have an odd number of chains so this is 51 and it's the one that i would recommend from say small to medium and now you are going to go into the seventh chain from the hook so one two three four five six and into the seventh you're going to place a double crochet there and then you're going to chain one skip one double crochet into the next chain chain one skip one double crochet into the next chain and you're going to repeat this all the way across So at the end of your row, you will have two stitches left and you'll chain one and go into the very last chain with a double crochet. So you're going to have something that looks like this. So we're going to row two and for row two, you're going to chain four and that counts as a double crochet chain one. Turn your work, go into the next double crochet on top of the next double crochet with one double crochet like that chain one skip the chain one space and then double crochet into the next double crochet so we are just aligning the double crochets on top of the double crochets and then chaining one in between so continue to do this all the way across So when you come to the end, you're going to have this chain. You're going to just chain one here and then skip the next chain and into the next chain, you're going to place a double crochet like that. And we are going to repeat row two again and again until we have this measurement stretched to half our hip measurement because we are doing two panels, one on the left and one on the right. Um, 
I'm making for 40 inches hip measurement. So you're going to keep working the mesh pattern until this can stretch to 20 inches because 20 is half of 40 and you'll have your first leg finished. So keep repeating um, row two by chaining four. So one, two, three, four, which counts as a double crochet chain one, turn your work and place a double crochet into the next double crochet chain one double crochet into the next double crochet chain one and repeat that all the way across and keep building your work until um, your work can stretch to half your hip measurement so um, the number of boxes that you have for each row should remain the same across we are not doing any decreases or increases so the number of boxes that you have for row one should be the same exact number of boxes that you have for maybe row 15, row 16, even row 30. So I'll let you know how many rows that I did for my shirt and then we see what to do from there. So we are coming to the end of row 30 and you're going to take a measurement. I have done my 30 rows and let's see what we have here. This is exactly 16 inches but when I stretch it, it can go up to 20. But make sure you leave some room for stretch. You can see I'm not like totally stretching it like this so that like when someone wears it, it's um, almost like this, like someone is busting out of the garment. Just give it a simple tug so that it can get to 20 inches or half your hip measurement. So once you get half your hip measurement, whatever size that you're working for, uh, we're going to row 31 or whatever row that you're on right now. So you're going to chain four, which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work and continue the mesh pattern until you get to that level where your legs split so since i told you right below your butt when you are measuring for the for the length of the shirt um i advise you just do about five boxes upwards so i have one two three four five and that is row 31 finished and you're going to chain four turn your work and double crochet we are still repeating the same exact um, pattern but this time we are shaping the crotch area we are shaping the shorts so that they can fit us perfectly well this is the part that goes right below in between your legs turn your work So at the beginning of every row, you have a chain four, which counts as a double crochet chain one. And you just continue to double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, then chain one at the end and skip one chain and double crochet into the next chain like that. So we want a total of eight rows for the smaller sizes, that's small to medium. Uh, for large XL, uh, you're going to do a total of 10 rows of these short rows. Turn your work. So, so far I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six short rows and I want a total of eight short rows. So 
so this is may 8th and my final one because i'm doing a size medium which is 40 inches hip measurement so if you're doing a small you're going to also have eight rows if you're doing large extra large you're going to have a total of 10 rows so this is what we have right now we have a total of eight short rows and then 30 rows across so you're going to fold over your work like this like that and you are going to single crochet twice into each box so i'm getting this panel and the next panel and placing two single crochets in those in that box and then go into the next box and into the next box on this side place two single crochets then go into the next two single crochets and then go into the next space two single crochets and go into the last space with two single crochets and what that has done is to join the two panels and the side that has this bump of single crochets as you can see that's the wrong side of our work so after this you're going to chain one and cut your yarn and then pull through so this is what we have right now and when you turn it to the right side we won't have that bump sticking out on our shirt and where you have that line that's the back side of your shirt and you can see the front doesn't have that line but when it comes to the back here is the seam line that we just created so um, we are going on to our next step all right guys so you're going to go ahead and work two identical panels as you can see here let me try to zoom out so that you can see exactly what's happening we have this panel finished and you're going to go ahead and make an identical panel just like um, the first one that you made and you're going to place them like this so that the extension is on the inner side of the shirt not on the edge not like this you're going to make sure your work is like this so that these extensions are on the inner side now you're going to open up your work like this because uh, make sure at this point your work is on the right side like how you want to wear your shirts and this should be the outside part now you're going to open up your two panels like this and you're going to start attaching the panels together right from this point all the way down in between the legs and all the way up and this will close up our shirt just like this and we shall have a well-fitted shirt so let me show you how to do that uh, you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to make a slip knot and attach it into the very first box you can see I'm attaching the two panels together so let me just do my work like this just place your work like this because I'm going to work towards this side and then I'm going to attach my yarn with a slip a slip stitch and then I'm going to go uh, let me zoom in a bit I'm going to go into the very first box so like this all right so after attaching your yarn you're going to go into the very first box as you can see i'm aligning the boxes together so that we just work in those spaces so you're going to go into the first box with two single crochets so a single crochet is insert your hook pull up a loop you have two loops on your hook and yarn over pull through all and that's all that you have to do so so far we have two single crochets in the first box and then go into the second box and you can see i'm going into both layers this side and this side and then place two single crochets one and then two so that's how we are going to attach our two panels together one and then two so the reason for me telling you to make an identical piece without altering any any of the things that you've done on the first piece is because um, when you get to this part and you have something that's different from the first panel it will definitely show you won't have a balanced uh, balanced joining 
when it comes to attaching these boxes together. They have to be the same exact count, same exact number of boxes so that you can get a very neat uh, joining and finish for your pair of shorts. So this is what you're going to have. This is how I'm joining the two panels together. And when I open it up, this is going to be the wrong side of my work, the side with the seam line. You can see the bulge here. And when I go onto the right side, we won't be seeing that bulge on the right side of our work. So go all the way down and I'll meet you back when you're around this point where um, the legs split. And I'll show you what to do from there. Just continue downwards. All right, guys, so you can see I've made it all the way down here. And now we are at that point where we have the two uh, leg holes splitting. You can see this space and this space. So you're going to just go ahead and continue to just work two single crochets into each and every box, attaching one box to the opposite box. So nothing changes. You're going to just work across this part, placing two single crochets in each box, attaching it to the opposite panel. Just make sure your work is aligned very well. Everything will be as easy as you can see in this video. So, so you can see what we have here, and this has created that middle section, as you can see here. Now we are going to go all the way up and continue to attach the two pieces together. Just placing two single crochets into each box, attaching it to the opposite side, all the way up. All right guys, so I'm going ahead to just place two single crochets into each and every box. So I'm running out of yarn, but I hope this can get me through. All right, so we are in the very last box and I'm placing a total of two single crochets and this marks the end of the joining of the two panels together. So let's see what we have. Uh, you should be having your shorts already shipped at this point. You can see where we've stopped and this is what we have right now. We have joined the two panels together. We have this panel and this panel joined together. We make a pair of shorts. And when we turn it to the other side, you should be having the same exact thing going on. So let's go on to the next part, which is uh, to make the waistband around the top of the shorts. All 
All right, guys. So instead of cutting my yarn after joining the uh, the two panels together, I am going to just continue working the waistband there and then. So this is going to be round one of the waistband. You're going to make a chain of three, which counts as a double crochet, and go into the very first box, which is this one, and you're going to place two more double crochets. So that will bring us to three double crochets total so far because we have the chain three which counts as a double crochet and then we have the two double crochets here so we have three stitches in this box then you're going to go into the next box and you're going to place two double crochets and then into the next box you're going to place three double crochets in the next box you're going to place two double crochets and you're going to go all the way around doing this, alternating between three double crochets in the next box and two double crochets in the next. So since I have two here, I'll go into the next box and place a total of three double crochets. So keep alternating between the two double crochets and the three double crochets all the way around. And I'll meet you back towards the beginning of my round here. So I'm almost coming to the end of round one of the waistband and I'm placing two double crochets into the next box and then three double crochets into the last box. So it doesn't matter how many stitches that you end with. The whole point is make sure you are alternating between three stitches and two stitches all the way around. As you can see here. Now, uh, after your very last stitch, you're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round. So after your slip stitch, this marks the end of round one of the waistband. And this is what you should be having for your round one of the waistband. It may be a little bit loose, but don't worry about that. We are going to fix that in a bit. So let's go on to round two of the waistband. All right, now for round two, we're going to start creating that ribbed effect when it comes to the waistband. So you're going to make a chain of three. And for the first double crochet, which is this one, you're going to place a front post double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go around the post of the double crochet like that and push it to the front and then work your double crochet as usual. That's a front post double crochet. And for the next stitch, which is this one, you're going to place a back post double crochet. So you yarn over, go to the back, and put your hook around the post, but pushing the stitch to the back, as you can see here. So once you do that, you're going to work your double crochet as usual. That's why they call it a back post double crochet, because it pushes the stitch to the back. Let's do that again. Front post, you push your stitch to the front like this and then work your normal double crochet as usual. Like that. And then for the back post, you yarn over, push your stitch to the back. Go around the post of the stitch, pushing it to the back and then work your double crochet as normal. As normal. So we're going to keep alternating between the front post and the back post double crochet all the way around. This can be a little bit intimidating for beginners, but once you practice, you'll get everything right. And this is going to start creating that ribbing that we want for our waistband. So let me show you what this is creating. You can see that. You can see the ribbing when it comes to the waistband. Um, the ribbing has started creating, uh, forming itself. So you're going to go all the way around and I'll meet you back towards the end of row two. Alright guys, so we are coming to the end of round two of the waistband and I've ended with a back post double crochet as you can as you can see here. 
And now I'm going to just wind up with a slip stitch into the very first chain three of the round. So insert your hook on top of the chain three and then pull through all. And that marks the end of round two. So let's go on to round three. So you're going to make a chain of three and we're going to place a front post double crochet into each front post double crochet. So you can see this one is a front post, so it will get a front post double crochet. And then the next one is a back post, so it will get a back post double crochet. And keep alternating between the two stitches, front post double crochet and back post double crochet. Front post and back post. And repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you back towards the end of this round around here around this level and I'll show you how to wind up Alright, so I've made it all the way around my third round of the waistband and I'm going to just make a slip stitch into the very first chain three of the round and then chain one and cut my yarn. I had very little yarn left so I have nothing to cut really. So this will mark the end of our waistband. So if you would like to end your shorts here, that's totally fine by me. But if you would like a well, more finished look just like we have on this side, then let's go ahead and learn how to do that. So you're going to grab your yarn. And make a slip knot. And then attach your yarn in any chain space, in any space around the leg hole. Like that. After attaching your yarn, you're going to chain one and make a single crochet into the same space. Just make one single crochet there. And then make a chain of two. And then go into the same space with a total of three double crochets. One, two, and three. After your three double crochets, you're going to go into the next space, which is this one. You're going to place a single crochet there. And then go into the next space, which is this one, single crochet there, like that. And this is going to start creating scallops, just like we have on this side already. This is the look that we are aiming for. So after this, you're going to make a chain of two. And then go into the same space with three double crochets, one, two, and three. After your three double crochets, you're going to go into the next space with one single crochet and then one single crochet into the next space. And then chain two and into the same space you're going to place three double crochets like that. And then one single crochet in each of the next two spaces. Chain two, three double crochets into the same space. One, two, and three. So we're going to repeat this all the way around and you can see how the scallops are evenly placed and it's giving us a much better finished look than what we had before. So this is totally optional. If you want to go ahead and try it out and then remove it later, that's totally fine. But I advise you give it a try. You may like it and uh, go ahead and put it on several of your projects. So just go all the way around the leg hole and I'll meet you back at the beginning of the round and show you how to wind up.
All right, so I'm coming to the end of my round and you can see the scallops or the shells have been formed around the leg hole and I am chaining two. I'm making my very last scallop. Three double crochets into the same exact space. And then after here, I'm going to place one single crochet into the next space, just like I've been doing for the behind uh, spaces. And then I'll go into the very first single crochet that I placed for my round, and I'll place a slip stitch. After this, I'll chain one, cut my yarn, pull through, and you're going to just tie these two ends together. Like that and then get rid of these loose ends and you're going to just repeat the same exact process for your second side as you can see we don't have a finish when it comes to this part but when it comes to this side this makes a whole big difference it looks well finished it looks neater it looks like something that was planned for so just go ahead and do the same exact process here Alright guys, so here we are with both sides finished. One thing that you should make sure you do is to cross check and count the number of scallops that you have on each side and make sure they are the same just to balance your shirts perfectly well. And the other thing that I wanted to point out is this very last round is worked on the right side of your work. So make sure you do that on the right side of the work because this very last round should face where the shirts should be um, on the top side. So that's basically it. This is just an addition that adds beauty to the shirts. And now we're going on to our next step, which is to do the drawstring for the waistband. Okay, now we're going to do the drawstring that's going to go in our waistband. So you're going to make a slip knot and make a very simple chain, just yarn over pull through. This is just a plain chain. And you're going to make a total of about 150 to 250 chains, depending on how long you want your drawstring to be. So just continue to do that and I'll meet you back when I have the desired number of chains that I want for my shirt. All right, now after making your chain of 150 or 200 chains or however long you want your drawstring to be, uh, you're going to place your work like this and you're going to go in and out of every two stitches of the second row of the waistband, which is the middle row of the waistband. In and out of every two stitches. So you can see what this is creating. You're going to go all the way around doing this for your waistband so that it can get to that level where it's adjustable to whatever size that you want it to be. Okay, now we've made it all the way around. All right guys, after putting the drawstring into the second row of the waistband, you're going to be able to adjust this waistband very comfortably well. And it's going to be well fitted around your waistline. And you can adjust it either to make it loose or tight depending on the fitting that you're going for and that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and i will see you in my next video bye